This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is the Fast Break Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. And alongside me, as always, he's back, Ricky Wimmer. What's up, what's up, guys? Hi. It is good to be back. I didn't miss that. And Dave Oster. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Hey, Dave, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Sean. Today, hey, we're doing a special podcast. We're going to have two podcasts this week. We're coming out, uh, we're recording this one on Wednesday, and then we're recording one on Saturday because it's free agency time. Things are already moving. As most of you know, we're going to be talking about the Chris Paul trade. We're also going to be talking about uh, PG3, th- PG13, sorry. The new Kevin Durant of this year. Yeah. We're just going to do videos for every single team. Everyone's got a chance. The PG13, not PG3. Yeah. It's CP3, PG13. There's too many uh, he initials is a point guard and numbers. With the number three. <laughs> yeah. uh, PG13, possibly going to the Rockets. And we're also talking about the firing of Phil Jackson, which might be uh, music to some New York Knicks fans. But let's jump into this. Uh, as most of you already know, but if you don't know, uh, Chris Paul was traded to the Rockets today. The Rockets will send Sam Decker, Pat Bev, Lou Williams, DeAndre Liggins, our boy DeAndre Liggins, Dave, yeah. uh, Darren Hill- Hilliard, I don't know Darren Hilliard, uh, Montrose Harrell, uh, Kyle Wilcher, and a top three protected 2018 first round pick, and $661,000 to the uh, Clippers exchange for Paul, um, and Chris Paul did sign uh, a year deal, and, and that actually extends his bird rights, so he's eligible for the Supermax mm-hmm. next year. So the guy who's running the players' union, uh, working his magic there and <laughs> helping, it, helping him out there. What so a, what a surprise he did that. Looking at this, we got to ask the question now. With Chris Paul being traded to the Rockets, are the Rockets the next super team or the new super team in the NBA? Not yet, but it seems like they're going there. And the thing that this does for the Rockets, and I know we're going to talk about this later, but it elevates them to now they are in the discussion for PG-13, but mm-hmm. alone with just Chris Paul, I don't think if it ends up being Harden and CP3, we're looking at this going, hey, man, what about that super team in Houston, man? They're going to beat the Warriors. They need another piece still. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I look at this team, and, and Dave will get to you. I, I look at this team, and you look last year, I said that you know, even with the Spurs there, that the Rockets had the best chance in the West to beat the Rockets. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to have to beat the Rockets to beat the Warriors. They I'm beat sorry. themselves. Uh, they can beat themselves. They did, actually. They did they beat themselves. Um, they had the best chance to beat the Warriors because they can shoot so well and they can mm-hmm. you know match pace-to-pace with the um, Warriors. Obviously, we didn't see that happen. They got smoked in the, in the playoffs in general. Um, but looking at this now, adding a CP3, adding one of the best defensive guards in the league, adding such a phenomenal facilitator, adding a great scorer himself, does it help them move closer to a super team or help them move closer to beating the Warriors at least? Obviously, it helps them move closer to a super team, but does it help them beat the closer to the Warriors at least? I think it definitely does. Uh, the one thing we saw out of the Rockets last year was James Harden playing balls to the wall for 82 regular season games. So damn near. I'm sure he took a couple off. But like mm-hmm. the, the thing is, by the time the playoffs hit, he was so run down. And that's why we had that inevitable drop off in performance from him, and everybody wants to rag on him for it. But at the same time, you have to realize that Mike D'Antoni went to a shorter, shortened lineup for his team during the playoffs. So mm-hmm. a lot of these bench players that we're talking about getting traded didn't have much of an impact on this playoff series. But you end up with a decreased amount of James Harden, and his quality was way down. So bringing in Chris Paul. I think that's a huge up and definitely brings them a notch closer to the Warriors already. And obviously there's still worries on this team. I mean, I think the biggest thing uh, and the reason why they're adding or thinking about adding a guy like Paul George is because you look at the lack of defense on this team. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously Chris Paul is a phenomenal defender. Yep. Um, James Harden has the ability to be a phenomenal defender. We saw that in OKC. Kind of trailed off a little bit in Houston for a little while when Dwight Howard came along, but uh, James you know, showed a little bit of a flash last year um, mm-hmm. to be that great defender. From obviously, time to time, he'd jump on people's backs. And you're shipping, you're shipping uh, Pat Bev out, who is one of your best defenders. Absolutely. Um, but Trevor Ariza is still there. He's a good defender. Absolutely. Clint Capella can be a fantastic um, rim protector. Ryan Anderson's a bum defensively. <laughs> but you look at Paul George, at least, the reason they're adding him is because that's the guy who's going to go up against Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. So um, you, you at least look at the baseline. How does Chris Paul and James Harden as a backcourt compare to the Warriors' backcourt or the Cavs' backcourt? I mean, is it the best backcourt in the NBA? I when you threw that best backcourt in the NBA on paper when it comes to names, yes, you can say best back. One I mean, of the this best is an Olympic level. The, it's an Olympic it level, but the one concern I have for this team is, and I'm going to have to wait and see before I go ahead and say will it work or will it won't. 
But both of these guys, Chris Paul and James Harden, are guys that have proven they need the ball in their hands to score. And they're guys that like to have the ball in their hand. I mean, James Harden can score off ball. James, He can score off ball, but James Harden is a guy that prefers to have the ball in his hand. And you saw it this year. When he was the point guard, this Rockets team was a lot better than it was. And the whole reason why, like not the whole reason, but a big reason why I think that the Rockets brought in another player to help out James Harden like this is because Dave mentioned it. He, we saw the fall off in that very last game where he only had 10 points, didn't even get double-digit assists. The mm-hmm. only time he ever did that in that series against the Spurs was, um, I want to say that was game three where he had five. So he only had under double digits twice and he had only three rebounds like we've heard Stephen A talk about like that is not James Harden someone stole his powers I don't know who that imposter is I kind of agree with him that wasn't the James Harden that we were used to and you could say yeah it was because he was tired I part of me goes eh, I don't really see it because the last few games going into it he was shooting 50 percent 55 percent 45 percent and he was scoring like 40 28 and 30 some points this is to help James Harden and say, it is not all on you. I just wonder how these two are going to, they can make it work. Mm-hmm. How are they going to make it work that, okay, you get the ball here, I get the ball here kind of a thing. Well, Dave, I want to I ask you kind of here is, is when you look at this offense, obviously it was set up on James Harden's going to have the ball. I mean, obviously in fast break, they're going to run, push it up the court. They're going to look for an open three and, and knock it down. Obviously they set records last year. They were yep. one of the best three-point shooting teams in the history of the NBA. Um, but looking at this, at least when they're in set offensive positions, do you? I mean, we saw a lot of James Harden driving in and then kicking out. That's why we saw a ton of assists from him. Do we think? Do you think at least you're going to see that offense still take place, but maybe it won't be James Harden driving every time, and you'll see a Chris Paul drive uh, sometimes and then kick it out to James Harden and, and have him sit out on the outside, and then maybe Chris Paul will sit out on the outside sometimes, and then you will you see a kind of rotation like that? Do you think this offense is going to change too much with uh, the addition of CP3 being um, added in there? Honestly, I think the way this is going to roll is it's going to be a split split ball handler backcourt. I, I think both of them are very capable. Uh, James Harden a little more turnover prone, as we know. And Chris Paul had that 2020 game, which was zero turnovers, which is just mm-hmm. ungodly for a point guard to have 20 assists without a turnover. I mean, he's um, I mean I, probably since John Stockton, he's the best, yeah. like pure point guard. Mm-hmm. I mean, exactly. obviously he's got a ton of and more tours around And he is a shooter as well behind yeah. the arc. Like he is one of the better three point shooters uh, on spot up. So it's weird saying he's probably the most underrated point guard while also being a top three point guard yep. in the league. It's it's crazy, but I, I think it will be a a by committee. I think they're both very capable. I can definitely see Chris Paul uh, happy to let James Harden. I mean, if Harden gets in a groove, you kind of want to feed him. Mm-hmm. It's no offense, and I know Chris Paul will see that because he is one of the smartest basketball IQ wise players in the NBA. Honestly, the biggest winner out of this whole thing is I'm looking at Clint Capella being like, oh, DeAndre Jordan got the the, the stat padding from having Chris Paul. I'm going to put up like 19 points a game and like 12, 15 rebounds. Like just outrageous numbers from him because now he is going to be the guy down low. So I, I like Chris Paul really coming in and being that um, primary ball handler, secondary ball handler. Like he mm-hmm. gives them so much versatility in the backcourt. Well, do you think the offense will change where you might see more pick and roll sets? And then maybe you'll see a Capella and Ryan Anderson come up where Anderson backs out because he's such a great three point shooter. And then Capella will drive in with yeah. CP3. Do you think that will help? No, there's, there's definitely a lot of versatility in that. The only thing that gives me concern is when we saw Chris Paul earlier in his career playing on a fast paced or, or yeah, a fast paced offense. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't really enjoy it like he didn't thrive there he liked very much the let me set up my offense let me run my sets so i think that's gonna be the biggest transition that i have a question mark about is how is he gonna fit in with the d'antoni quick pace uh jack up threes when you're like eight seconds into the shot clock like is that gonna work for him are they gonna compromise i think there should be a little bit of compromise Mm -hmm. because you look at the historic numbers of shooting they had last year and they're giving away some decent shooters already so i think that this is going to be a tweaked process already and as the team continues to develop throughout free agency i I think this is going to be like the first two months of this year are going to be like a test time to see like is it going to be you know 80 20 chris paul with the ball to james harden Mm -hmm. are we going closer to a 50 50 and then like the play style i think it's still be fairly similar to what we see today as far as the pace though well and, and Ricky, I want to go to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you see, obviously, what Dave brought up, and I think he made some great points there. Um, do you think that 
at least having this dual action where you'll have the running gun, you'll have, you know, firing up threes in eight seconds, and then also be able to slow it down with Chris Paul. How do you think that will not only just affect the play of the NBA, but obviously the biggest question is how will that go against the Warriors? So let's say, well, you know, just looking at the team that they have right now, you know, you know, leaving mm-hmm. out the Paul George question and stuff like that. Well, uh, any question, because they got to bring in someone else that ultimately. Yeah, and, and they have room. They, have, they still have their mid-level, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. Um, we'll get into that a little later. But how do you think that um, that change of pace where they can go, you know, fast, all balls to the wall uh, right away and then also pull it back? How do you think that will work against either the Warriors or really any team in the, in the West or East? With the team that they have right now, I think this is something where adding CP3 helps them get a little bit better when it comes to the Spurs. That's a team where I think, like, because that's a team they lost to. With CP3, it brings you a little bit closer to the Spurs. Of course, the Spurs do have Kawhi You don't Leonard. think it, ex- it overtakes them? I, I Almost. I think it can. I think that that series with CP3, that series definitely goes seven. And that series could be a rocket win mm-hmm. with CP3. When it comes to the ultimate measuring stick, though, and the Warriors, I still think they're behind the eight ball because the thing that I kind of think about is CP3 and James Harden – can kind of have a little bit of what the Warriors have because sometimes you saw Steph handle the ball, sometimes you had Kevin Durant handle the ball. The thing that they are missing is the Clay Thompson piece, and that would be the PG3 where, yeah, he can shoot, but ultimately you're adding him because he is going to be the guy that, hey, if we need a defender, he's the best oh, defender Dre's, that we have. Trace that. Draymond well, Green's your best defender. I'm Draymond talking, Green's your I'm talking defensive about out of the one, star. Yeah. I'm talking about out of the one, two, three. They the Rockets don't well, have anybody that compares up to but you, you also, Draymond Green level of defense. I mean, you look at that. Low. I mean, uh, you don't know exactly what the lineup's going to look like. But mm-hmm. if they don't get rid of Eric Gordon, which they might most likely do, I mean, Six that's the rumors the out year. there. That's the rumors out, out there. I mean, maybe yep. they do end up if they get Paul George, you go with a lineup of. I mean, I don't know exactly how it would work. Maybe you don't do that, but uh, I mean, I, I understand out of the one, two, three, but still, I mean, Draymond's. You're going to put Draymond on, on your best offensive player, and, and you're going to do that with Paul George too. I mean, I, I, I really don't know, understand, but I, I get what you're saying. They need a defensive guy. That's the point. They need but someone who. Do they need a defensive so guy, or do they need a star with defensive? I, I think. I think that's more along the lines. I see where you're going with this, Sean. And I think because you have Trevor Reza, who is still one of the better 3 and D players in this league, mm-hmm. I still have full confidence in him um, coming off the bench and playing up against people's ones without you know too much of a question. He's not quite Andre Iguodala levels of good defense, but he's still serviceable at, at the NBA at the one level. So I'm fine with that. I think Paul George brings, uh, and I know I hate this because he gets criticized so much for he he's a star. He's not a superstar. He's yet to win the big win much at all. To be honest, mm-hmm. like playoff wise, he's known for choking mm-hmm. time after time after time in the clutch. I mean, he's, he's, he's never, never had actually, a game winner, right? Exactly, it's like zero for twenty two in the playoffs. Yeah, something horrendous like that. So I'm like, I, I feel comfortable having Chris Paul and James Harden there to be the closers, really, when it comes down to it. But Paul George just carries a team to a different level because mm-hmm. you got to remember that series against uh, Cleveland within. A, I know it was a sweep. Mm-hmm. But a sweep that was decided by 16 points yeah. over four games. That's what you can do with a team that only had really Miles Turner helping out. I mean, that was a very lopsided roster. And honestly, like, Paul George is a fantastic player, but I don't know that he on his own will be able to carry them to like level with uh, what Kevin Durant's impact was to the Warriors well, and team. And that's well, why I'm saying that when it comes to, if we're measuring them up to the Warriors, it wouldn't be... CP3 well, and Paul George. That's that the ultimate dr- goal, right? I well, mean. yeah, it is. But I'm not saying that CP3 and Paul George would be your Durant and Steph. Your Durant and Steph but would this be Harden is, and But CP3. this is different. You have three ones on this team. Harden's a one. Paul George is a one. CP3 is a one. Yep. This isn't like... Mm-hmm. Harden's, Harden's Steph- going to have to go... Like To me, Harden's going to have to play the two. Yeah, no, no, he's he's no but he means like as, as a person, no, no. as a position like, on the I, team. Like it's, they are all your number one guys. We yeah. always talked mm-hmm. about with Jim, Jimmy Butler. I I don't think he's a number one. I think right. Cat's still that number one in, in Minnesota. I think he's going to grow to that. I mean, scoring wise, no, I think he's going to end up growing to that. I think I, I don't think he's going to be the number one right away. But I think Cat is younger. He's one of the best young players in the yep. league. I know you don't want to build around big man, but Cat looks like the one you can do. Anyways, getting off sidetrack. 
I'm saying Chris Paul can be the your best player on a team and you can win yeah. a championship. James Harden could be the best player on a team and you can win a championship. Paul George can be the best player on a team and you can win a championship. I believe that all. Potentially. I, well, <laughs> I like how all three of those don't have a ring. Uh, that's it. No, that's the no, thing, but they, right? they've never been on a team that's been that good. You need pieces so, around that. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. I mean, no one's just saying those three are going to beat the Warriors three mm. on five. Obviously, <laughs> they need pieces around them. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, I, I think that you know, obviously, you're going to build a team around them, and you're going to build a team uh, together. I think th- this team, at least, you know, without Paul George, is still something on paper that can compete in the West for sure. And oh, I, th- I think that they, I think they take the edge over the Spurs right now. I mean, obviously, that's different because I you think don't, they could too. You, you obviously don't know what they're going to do in in free agent, both yeah. the Spurs and the. Uh, Rockets, because uh, the Rockets still have, uh, and I just want to make sure I'm getting this right, they still have uh, their, um, let's see, uh, yeah, mid-level exception, uh, and they still have uh, room underneath to sign players. And I think they're still trying to move out contracts as well so they can mm-hmm. bring in players. So obviously they're going to try to bring in vets, they're going to try to bring in 3 and D players, they're still going to try to bring in a superstar, like mm-hmm. you were saying. Um, and then also with the Spurs, I mean, George Hill, possibly you with him. Mm-hmm. So obviously there's players there, but still looking at this of, James Harden, uh, Chris Paul, Ryan Anderson, Clint Capella, Eric Gordon. That core, I still think, can can give you know damage to the Spurs and possibly knock them out. I still think they can take the Warriors to maybe six games or something crazy like that. I still think that this team, with their ability to go fast and slow and, and back and forth, I still think this team could really knock someone out. And I think I, that they can give the Warriors trouble. I think that's interesting that you say that they would be able to take the Warriors to six because I know Dave's going to bring up the Kyle Korver shot. But I look at it's like we we saw the Cavs that obviously have more I'm gonna say star pieces than the Rockets do right now, and they lost in five. But they may have more star pieces, but does their fit match up well against the Warriors? And that's the thing that I focus on because mm-hmm. you can have all the talent in the world if you don't know how to the use Rockets it, you're not do, gonna deliver. That's the one thing I will say. The Rockets do have the potential to have that fit because I feel like the Rockets are gearing up for a, you know what? We're not going to slow you down. We're going to try to beat you. You want to be fast? We're going to be faster. That was the game plan going into the year. We're going to be scoring faster. Obviously, they don't have anyone on uh, defense as of right now to stop It doesn't matter if you make that first three. No, but I'm saying just (laughs) to to stop KD because KD can go ISO and take you for 27 while Mm -hmm. you have three points. Yeah, I think right now it's just more so like I I think it's matchup-wise how it's going to fit out for them, and I think that bringing Chris Paul and James Harden at the 1-2, I'm fairly confident that they can go 1-2 against Steph and Clay. Oh, and for sure. And that's going to be a matchup just... It, it, I would just pay to watch that two on two game See, forever. <laughs> there, there. That's the thing is, is I think they they beat everyone in the backcourt, CP3 and James Harden, without a doubt. I think they're the best backcourt in the NBA right now. We, we, I don't think it's really even that close because you have Chris Paul, who I think again is a top three point guard and probably the most underrated point guard, and James Harden, who is one of the best guards just in general. Because he, I mean, obviously he was a point guard last year, um, and I moved yeah. him out now because he's probably going to move to the two. Because I would probably both going to average like. Fuck. Like I would ten probably, and seven assists. I mean, I would probably put silly. James Harden as a point guard over Chris Paul just because of what he did statistically. <laughs> I would still like Chris Paul as a point guard, and that you know, I think he's you know, you get two top four point guards pretty yeah. much in the NBA. I mean, it's one of the most dangerous backcourts. Talk to me two months into the season, then I'll answer that See question. See how the experiment works right, out. Right now, I'm still going to say but, Steph and Clay. But why only wouldn't be, it work? Well, because of what I brought. I mean, up Clay, earlier. Clay was br- we Clay was I mean, non-existent pretty the much this whole big, playoff. The, Who's defensive only? The biggest question mark with this. Bringing CP3 in is what I mentioned before. These are two guys that in the past we've proven, yeah, someone's going to have to give up the ball a little bit and give up some ownership. Someone's going to move to the two. But these are two guys that have been ball-dominant guards, especially last year with yep. Harden moving on to the point usage. guard. Let me see the experiment and how it is going to work and mold before I crown them the best back. But one thing we have seen is, is that James Harden, um, at least you know this year, or the past year he really went down at least from three pointers because he he wasn't really able to set it up. Most of the ones he was firing up were at the end of a shot clock or um, heavily contested or as heavily well. contested. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be interested to see how he does more in a spot up shooter uh, kind of kind of range where he might have more space because this was one of his worst three point shooting mm-hmm. uh, you know percentage. It was his worst three point. Uh, shooting percentage of his career. I mean, but those, 30, assi- 34, but those 30, assist numbers. Thirty four point seven. But what it's I'm saying like is highest he volume can, too. He can, he can, yeah, I mean nine nine a game. He, but he I mean even last year he was shooting eight a game and yeah. was shooting around thirty five. 
So, I mean, he can be a guy who, if he has open space, he can hit around 39% of those threes, 40% of those threes, because he is such a dangerous shooter. Right. So, I mean, you might see the efficiency go up for James Harden. Yes, he might not have 29, 11, and 8. He might not have that, but he might be more of an efficient player. He, he might, might see not that need per, to. He might be more of a valuable player because As he's well. more efficient. I mean, that's the thing exactly. with LeBron. This wasn't LeBron's best season um, at least, you know, with, with points totals. But, I mean, he was still so efficient. That was the crazy thing. He was, like, fifth, over, what, 53% from the field? Something 40, ridiculous. His shooting percent 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 three. beyond outrageous. James Harden could become that player. And, and we we know what Chris Paul can do. So I don't, I'm don't. i not really too worried about the fit because, you know, again, you look at what James Harden's able to do. He can still shoot, create his own shot, and he can still drive and, and draw contact like anybody. I yep. mean, he, he's the best in the game of Til- drawing Till they change that contact. rule. I mean... That's kind of one of the funniest things is Chris Paul is known as one of the most vocal players on the court to argue with refs over yeah. calls. James Harden notoriously hilariously flops mm-hmm. um, and and will not shy away from the refs as well. And that so, che- cheap mover, you know, he, he gets jumps him on the, the jump. At, well, no, he, he, oh, I'm not well, that saying that. that, that jump, the hand the, where he hooks people's yeah, arms? And, or even the jump where he, uh, he'll he pump fake from beyond the arc and then just bump his body into it and yeah. toss it up. I mean, and he's he got steps, so many little tricks like Steph's that. Steph's guilty with it, too. But James Harden's a player that I still think he's going to get Crafty. his own. No matter what. I mean, he's super crafty. Yep. Um, he's still a great shooter. He could still create his own shot. Mm-hmm. And then when you have one of the best facilitators in NBA history with Chris Paul, being able to set that up, I mean, it's only going to be more dangerous. I, I, it's it's a fit that I just see and that I think is going to work. I mean, maybe Chris Paul might not be assisting him on every single play. It might be something where he's going to hit Ryan Anderson, then Ryan Anderson is going to hit mm-hmm. James Harden or something like that. But, but I still think it's going to work. That's, that's the key. I mean, we've talked about this in the past. It's how, how are the Warriors so successful? How can other ball teams movement. try to emulate them? And that's ball movement and mm-hmm. shooters. And that's exactly the game plan the Rockets well, took. And I mean, not just that. Look at when, when the Spurs were winning mm-hmm. the championship and they were doing well before even the Warriors. What were we talking about? Man, look at how look at how many people touch the ball before it gets yep. into the hoop. Yeah, it was always a point of contention. Mm-hmm. There's I- Oh, My go. biggest concern with Chris Paul is obviously his health, though. Mm-hmm. This is a guy who's played one full season out of the last five, um, missing anywhere from twelve to like twenty-five game or twenty-two games. Do you think he'll so, get hurt in a high volume kind of? Well, like, that's that's a concern. James is how Harden high is his usage? And because of this, could you see a system where they end up kind of pulling like a, a stuff in clay where they can take heavy time off during each game because of potential leads? If well, they the get bench to is a, gone. The bench has been traded. Well, they're going to have a D League bench probably. Yeah. They're, they're going to have like three, four guys on there who are ag- like, you know, rookie contract mm-hmm. D League. But then so. again, I mean, if Daryl Morey, Morey's doing his job right and, and he's able to they find guys like a Jordan Bell in the second round, buy a Patrick McCaw, go get a guy like uh, or Andre just poach Iguodala. the summer league. No, I mean, like they still, again, they still have their mid level exception. They still have the ability to go out and get a guy mm-hmm. like Paul George. Mm-hmm. They still have the ability to sign players. And as long as Maury's doing his job to get these players and D'Antoni's helping to find guys that will fit his system, I don't see how this really can't work. Because D'Antoni, I mean, again, he brought in uh, Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon, two guys who were known to you know get hurt consistently. Both guys were healthy. Yeah, and they no, were playing the, high value. The training staff out there is fantastic. It, it's I think they're one of the top five. So, so I mean, it's something too where um, if you have Chris Paul on the court and James Harden on the bench, that's not going to hurt your team because again, Chris Paul is one of the best guards. If you have Chris Paul on the bench and James Harden, mm-hmm. you can run that high tempo offense that worked last year. So I really don't see this. Being too much of a problem, again, it's now the biggest question of who's next. When it comes to them being the second best team in the West, this makes them better and this could make them... I still want to put the Spurs right there because, I I mean, I respect (laughs) the Spurs and I respect what um, kind of players pop or the kind of performance he gets out of players. They could be definitely the number two team in the West. I don't think this puts Mm -hmm. them over the Warriors, though. And no, I'm, God, not, no. I'm not worried, like you said. I'm not worried. It's just let me see how this experiment works before I go and judge them and crown them. Basically. Obviously, it does not put them over the Warriors.